Hello guys, <laughs> welcome back. This part, we will look at the lock statement in C Sharp or the .NET Framework. The lock keyword marks a statement block as a critical section by obtaining the mutex or the mutual exclusion lock for a given object. Executing a statement and then releasing the lock. We will make we try to do some examples and actually um, highlighting how the lock can be implemented. So the first what we do is we're just gonna add a very simple class here and obviously we use it in relation to a, an account or i.e. like a, like a bank account or something like that. So we just say an account. We just create a simple class here called an account and first of all we just add a double and we can say this is the balance of the account and we have uh, of course an object this will be actually the lock object this we use it for the lock obj the lock obj right so then we add a simple public class and it's a void yeah, we just name it um, withdraw obviously to withdraw money so in the withdraw it takes a double which is the amount and then this is where it gets a bit uh, this is where it gets interesting here we can we can lock our object the lock object and then inside the, the lock we can say if amount is greater than the balance then we we, we throw um, a new exception and uh, we can actually add a message insufficient funds insufficient funds otherwise we go ahead and we do the transact otherwise we can say uh, we, we, we take the balance out of the amount So as you can see, it is fairly and pretty simple stuff. So we just go ahead and and just we can also we can make this a static. Oh, um, since since um, the object, we we're gonna have to make the object also a static object as well. And the balance static so we've got all of them sorted out so the next bit of course is we say um, account dot withdraw and we just put oh, um, I'm just gonna pause it in a bit so uh, what we do is um, obviously that we set the initial balance we set it to something like 100 so we come back here so what we do is we just say we draw 20 dot um, 99 so we once we come to the here what we do is we just gotta print out we print out there the balance so we know how much is left now so you can say console.reline and we can run it to see so now we've got it we've got it running so we just press any key to enter and there is obviously an error that we will sort out So as you can see, 
the lock is now because we did not initialize it so we come to here because we did not initialize the object so we set it to a new new object so we've actually initialized it we can even make it rename it to underscore lock or bj whatever so we just we just run it again so we press any key to enter so as you can see we've got the obviously the, um, the transaction completed but still we're not actually getting the real importance of the luck so the next example we actually go further this bit is just to show how we can use the luck so what we do is we're just gonna um, we're just gonna continue from here so he then there's there's some notes that we have to make the, the lock keyword ensures that one thread does not enter a critical section of code while another thread is in the critical section if another thread tries to enter a locked code it will wait block until the object is released so in this in this, this um, next example what we do is we will actually um, add we, we incorporate the thread into a example so we make it a little bit trivial so from where we have right now we've got our withdrawal and we've got um, the balance and whatnot so and then the, the lock object so the next bit is obviously we add um, a random R&D uh, we can say static random R&D and we can initialize it as a call to new random so we initialize it here and then we can actually set a um, constructor and we add and with this we can say the initial balance or the initial amount and we can set that to and so we, we just not set values to the balance again so the initial so we can say the balance is equal to the initial so in the next bit is we actually go inside um we come here what we do is we we remove everything from the withdrawal we write, we write the whole code again so we have an if statement here so if the balance is less than zero we throw new exception and we say a negative balance Otherwise, we go ahead and we lock, we lock our lock object. So that's what we have now. So this is what we do. We say if the balance is greater or equal to amount, and we can say. balance before transaction so we just put a balance before the transaction this will be
So this will be our balance. And then we have um, amount to be drawn. Then the last, um, okay, we can say the balance is equal to balance minus the amount. Then we can also say console the right line. balance after withdrawal this will be a new balance so as we see the, how the whole thing is going so I'll return the amount so in this case as you can see our, our return type is, is just void so what we do is we, t we change it to double you change the return type to double and then we can say else return zero so as we can see this is it's a very simple and straightforward so the next bit of course will be a simple method we're just going to collapse the withdraw and a simple void method so we can say it's a public static void so we can say do transaction so this will do the transactions actually so we can we can just loop for i for int i is equal to zero and i is less than 100 i plus plus so we can say withdraw and we pass the r and d next let's double So we can say one to one hundred. You don't nest. Okay, we just make it nest. So the next bit, of course, is we come to the to the main. So here we remove this bit here. Then what we do is um we start um a thread. Array thd is equal to a new thread. Average. So we just make oh, add them 10. We set the value to 10, and we can say. So we, I said we have um, a constructor for the account. So we can say account AC is equal to new account. So we pass in the initial amount. So we just say 2000. So when we put a for for loop here for int i is equal to zero, then i is less than ten i plus plus. Then we can say THD I dot start. So we start the thread. Then what we do next is
we say um, for each THD variable thread so we can say thread dot join so we join it we join the thread this actually block main thread until all other um, threads are, have run to completion so we, we got a note there so we just run it to see what happens so, but of course we gonna have to pull a red line here so I'll say console the red line so there's one one more thing that we have to do so after the, the, the initialization of the account we put a for loop here again and it's int i is equal to zero and i is less than 10 and i plus plus So inside here, what we do is um, we start in with a thread t is equal to. So we initialize a new thread. Then say new thread start. So we pass the ac dot. Um, say account. Dot do transaction. So we say THD I is equal to T. So this is what we've got for here now. So I'm just gonna pause it for a bit now. So what we do is just start the app and then here what we do is press any key to continue so once we so as you can see the transactions keeps going 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 until we have the balance after to be zero so as you can see it, it, it doesn't actually let any it, it, um, the, the, the lock blocks all the critical section so that obviously we don't have a uh, multiple transactions or double spending in terms of like banking transactions so you have to note this especially when you're building a, a process critical to which obviously you would want one thread to execute after the other it is very important to understand the, the luck the next bit of the video is we will have a look at the mutants obviously we will explain that into details more so if you're still here, please do make sure you subscribe to the channel and please thanks, I mean, thanks for your time and catch up later. Bye bye.